euphoric recall. Tease is just a few examples of what it can be. It can be something in a jar, in a bag, it could be a beverage, it could be in many things. For our purposes, this is going to tie into long-term weight loss. So please keep watching. There are many different types of euphoric recall. Again, it's kind of like a catch-all phrase, for, but for this short video, I am only going to speak of, of it connecting it to weight loss, especially long-term weight loss. So I use myself as an example, and this is a true example, when I was 70 pounds overweight, actually I am now 70 plus 15, I have lost over 85 pounds. And that's a process, and I learned how to minimize the roller coaster of weight loss and gain by being realistic with my caloric deficit and being realistic and knowing my weight loss expectation for each week. So I just went off on a tangent. However, the behaviors were still there and I had to unlearn behaviors and learn from it. And one was the eating cereal in the middle of the night. I'm sleeping, sound asleep, this alarm bell goes off in my head. And next thing you know, I look at the clock and it's 3 a.m. and I'm eating cereal. And just a couple of hours ago, I had a full dinner and I was doing fantastic for my caloric budget that's conducive to my long-term weight loss goals. Next day, rolls over, rolls in, and guess what Julio does? Coach Julio. He wakes up at 3 a.m. and he eats cereal. So now my caloric deficit that I had and worked hard for a couple of hours earlier can now be erased. Now, before you go Google Euphoric Recall, hey, this is just my definition. This is my experience. It's just a nice catch-off phrase I use with my clients to see if they identify with that behavior where, like myself, I said it before, I wake up at a certain time and I have a certain type of food or beverage. And that that activity in itself is okay, but the food that I was eating was high in caloric density and the portions were small. So because I had that off switch broken, I had more portions. I was unable to keep it at one portion, which would have been conducive to my caloric deficit for that day, my budget for my long-term weight loss goal. Do you identify it? I needed to find an alternative for that cereal because what was happening, I was unwilling to give up anything else in my day to fit that, that, um, that type of food in. So it was more based on the caloric density of the food I was eating and the portion size. So I would have a couple of bowls rather than one. See where I'm going with this? If I was eating one bowl, then I would be all set. But because I love it, I had that euphoric recall, it makes me feel good. And it was just like a, the off switch was broken, let's just put it like that. I couldn't turn it off. I eat the on button turned on and I had three bowls. Next thing you know, I'm thinking, hey, should I run 20 miles? Not realistic. Or should I just learn from that behavior and find an alternative? So the whole purpose of this video again is to share with you that there are many, many, many alternatives to any type of food that we're tying into euphoric recall if we're not willing to, for the time being, to put it aside until we hit some short-term goals. All you have to do is Google healthy alternative for snacks or the type of food or beverage you are interested in finding an alternative for. How does that sound? That is a realistic solution. Now, what's the hard part is to, to stop it. So some of us need to go cold turkey. So I had to do this myself uh, more, than one, more, more time than once where I just basically didn't have it in the house. Sorry, could not have it in the house, just can't have it in the house. And that was practice. So yep, so sometimes I would buy one box and then fail. And if you don't know what the fail acronym is, is first attempt in learning, fail. So I try again and try again. Next thing you know, I don't have it in the house anymore. And I had to substitute. For me at that time, I was substituting it by drinking with water, and just drinking water. And um, next thing you know, my brain stopped craving and that euphoric recall was paused. So as of now, I don't wake up at 3 a.m. craving that cereal. Again, because I put a pause to that euphoric recall and you can do it too. It comes down to just a behavior. And that's why my style of uh, helping people achieve long-term weight loss is based on behavior, lifestyle changes, small little changes that happens over a period of time. So when you lose that five pounds, you have a period of time of unlearning certain behaviors. That's win-win. You hit your long-term goal, let's say 30 pounds, you have months 
maybe even a year of having a new lifestyle developing as you're losing the weight and you're building and you're building new confidence you have a whole new outlook and perspective on long-term weight loss and avoiding the roller coaster of weight loss and gain that's powerful so what do you think i'd love to hear from you i want you to post your comments and please don't forget to subscribe